Hello and welcome to the next episode of the War 4X Ship Design 101 series. In today's episode, we'll be going over an extremely important component in ship design, particularly military ship design, that being sensors. This video will go over each sensor available to you in a War 4X C Sharp and explain how to design, create, and use these sensors. Like the style of my other videos, this video will primarily be me talking over pre recorded content that illustrates the various points I am making. So make sure, if you don't quite understand what I am saying, to have a clear look at the video that goes along with it to help you understand and make sure to use the chapters to skip to the parts that may interest you the most. Now before we get into the video, please remember to leave any suggestions for future tutorials in the comments below and feel free to let me know if I got anything wrong and I will hopefully be able to correct or talk to you about it in the comments below. So without further ado, let us get into the video. The first question someone who is not familiar with the War 4X C Sharp might ask is, what are sensors? To answer this question, we must look at all the different types of sensors, as sensors themselves are not just one thing, but a group of multiple components that do vastly different things to each other, even within their own lines. So to get us started, I will lay out all the types of sensors clearly, as well as detail what they are, and how they fit into a Warfax C Sharp ship design as a whole. There are three types of sensors, and on screen you will see their names, as well as the attributes that have been attributed to them in the game. Number one, active sensors. These are sensors that are toggleable with an on and off setting. They do rely on your EM sensor sensitivity tech as well as your active grav sensor strength tech to provide what you might like to think of as radar coverage in a circle around the vessel with such a sensor that when on detects other vessels. They are often known as military sensors as they allow weapons to lock on to a target once they have detected an enemy vessel. Passive sensors. There are two kinds of sensors. Uh, that are called passive sensors. What we refer to as thermal sensors, or THS for short, and electromagnetic sensors, or EMS for short. Unlike their active cousins, they are always on, and this is what gives them their name, passive. As their other name suggests, they detect a particular type of emission. This emission being either thermal, such as a nuclear engine, or electromagnetic, such as an active sensor that is turned on which ships will often output, thus allowing sensors to provide a useful service to those who carry them. Next, we have, for number three, survey sensors. The simplest of the sensors, they are simply small components that do not need to be designed that are used in two processes. The first being geological surveying of worlds and objects, and the second being gravitational surveying of jump locations, which unlocks the ability for jump ships to find and go through jump points. These sensors will not be talked about much in today's video, but they are still extremely important to any empire. Now that we have noted down and talked about every individual type of sensor, I will quickly summarize. Sensors are components used to detect a variety of things in space, from minerals to warships and other worlds, as such they are vitally important when interacting with other races as well as other objects in space, and many ships utilize and require them to fulfill their purposes. Ensure you pick the right sensor for the job for this very reason. And now we will move on to number three, part three of this video. Um, stick with us. Now that we are familiar with the types of sensors available to us, as well as what they are and their primary uses, we will now go over the exact mechanics that each type of sensor has. So to start, we will be going over the most flexible and designable type of sensor, the active sensor. As you know, it uses your active grav sensor strength as well as your electromagnetic sensor sensitivity to determine the range in which it detects enemy ships, but there is much more to it than that. So, let's go over active search sensor mechanics. When designed, an active search sensor uses a set resolution as part of the formula to determine its range. The resolution directly relates to the tonnage that you want to detect, such as 5,000 tons or 10,000 tons. Think of this as fine tuning a sensor to detect a certain wavelength. A sensor that is tuned to detect large capital ships will not be of any use in detecting missiles. While it can detect them, it will be at such a limited range that it will be practically of no use. To help you understand how the range relates to the resolution, as well as electromagnetic sensitivity and active grav sensor strength, the formula will now be posted on screen. As you can see, resolution plays a big part in determining the range of a sensor. 
So in summary, when designing and thinking about active search sensors, you need to lock in on a certain type of enemy tonnage you may want to detect. The particular sensor to detect and get the true amount of this is what you will want. And as your tech increases or the size of your sensor increases, you will be able to detect things that are much further away. Keep in mind, size is handicapped at 0 0.1 to 50. Another mechanic that is very important is how much GPS or grav pull strength your sensor is emitting, thus being easier to detect by enemy vessels. Every active search sensor emits this, and this is why you can turn it on or off depending on the situation as it can give away your position to an enemy. The formula below will indicate the amount you emit. By following the former formula, even a fairly small sensor can emit a high amount of GPS and make your ship very visible when the sensor is turned on. This is important to realize because enemy vessels tend to target the ship with the biggest active search sensor because of this. It is also important to keep in mind that using such a sensor on, for example, a stealth ship would be unwise as it directly contradicts the purpose of such a craft. Now that we have covered the major mechanics specific to active search sensors, we'll move on to the mechanics of the next kind of sensors, that being passive sensors. Passive sensors are rather simple. They are always on and have very few variables to configure. As stated above, uh, stated above the sensors detect specific types of emissions. The higher those emissions, uh, the further the range of the sensor. This means that a passive sensor will be able to detect a large electromagnetic or thermal signature further away than a smaller signature. The way it determines this range is listed below in the corresponding formulas for both thermal and electromagnetic sensors. As your tech increases or the size of your sensor inc increases, you will be able to detect emissions further and further out. But keep in mind, it is of course handicapped as stated before. Now due to the very specific nature of your passive sensors, they can only give you certain information about a target. For example, a thermal sensor can, give a, can only give you a rough estimate to how powerful an enemy ship's engines are, and or what type they are, commercial or military. They can also tell you the location of these ships, but they cannot tell you the tonnage of the vessel. This same logic applies to electromagnetic sensors as well, and those are the primary mechanics and formulas related to passive sensors. Next, we will move on to survey sensors. Survey sensors are sensors that are not player designed, instead they are pre-made components that can only be upgraded when better tech is researched for a flat bonus to their effectiveness. Both gravitational and geo-survey sensors use the same system to survey, by generating points from each sensor that is on board when at the desired location to be surveyed, with each location at a threshold of points that needs to be met before it is successfully surveyed. There are two ways to increase this process, either stacking more sensors onto the ship and thus more tonnage onto the ship, or increasing your technology level uh, to allow a single sensor to generate more points. Without geosurvey sensors, you will not be able to locate minerals and ruins without, and without gravitational survey sensors, you will not be able to locate jump points so you can go to another system. There is not much to know about them, uh, not, there is not much to know uh, about geo survey sensors and gravitational survey sensors, uh, as I've said, but it is important that you do understand what they do and that you do not overlook them. Before we move on to the next part of the video, there is a few small notes and mechanics to go over regarding sensors as a whole. Each sensor, number one, each sensor, besides survey sensors, have the ability to include electronic hardening. This hardening can be added once researched and provides protection against weapons that do damage only to electronic systems. Without hardening, each sensor will be destroyed by any kind of electronic damage 100% of the time. Number two, a fleet and or ship can log onto an enemy ship and fire using another fleet's active sensors instead of its own, if it wants to. And as it is not required to have your own active sensors to fire. So as long as some kind of active sensor has detected the enemy ship within the system, you can fire uh, any, from any other fleet, even if they don't have their own active sensors. All sensors use the mineral uranium. That's a small one there. So, now that we have gone over the specific mechanics of each type of sensor, we are now going to move on to the next part of the video, as I said, which will give a step-by-step -step process of designing a sensor, creating and then installing it onto a craft for use.
As the last part of the video suggested and said, this will be a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create and design active search sensors and passive sensors. I will be going over how to research to unlock the ability to design sensors, as well as how to design sensors and what each individual thing means. And then I will go over how to research and eventually add them to the ship you want to add them to. So let's get right into it. In this window, you'll, uh, you'll have where you'll be designing your active search sensors. Now keep in mind that you will have active uh, graph sensor strength and EM sensor sensitivity. If this is not a thing for you, that means that you have not researched active graph sensor strength. Same with EM sensor sensitivity. So you'll want to head over to the research and go over to sensor and control systems. You'll then want to look here and research active graph sensor strength and also uh, EM sensor sensitivity and thermal sensor sensitivity if you need to. Once active graph sensor strength and the necessary other requirements are researched, you can go back into create research project and you can start building your sensor or designing it. You will see a box which will indicate the range of uh, the sensor you are designing, the size of the sensor, what technology it's using, the cost of the sensor, and a few other unimportant things. You will also have the formula here for what equates to sensor range, um, and make sure to go back to that if you're ever confused on what you really need to be tuning. So we're going to go down the list. We have active graph sensor strength, which is part of the formula to determine the range of the sensor. Same with EM sensitivity tech. You'll want to use the best possible technology level you have here. Then we have sensor size. Sensor size goes from one to 50, and the bigger they are, the, the bigger the sensor size is, the larger the tonnage. This is indicated in HS. So one equals 50 tons, and 50 equals 5,000 tons. This goes all the way as well down to 0.1 for extremely small sensors, which is 5 tons. We then have resolution, which as I've said in the past a bit part of the video, uh, this is basically fine tuning your sensor to detect certain types of enemy tonnage. So you can fine tune to detect 25,000 ton vessels, which will, allow, will give you better range versus these types of vessels than otherwise, but much worse range than versus a uh, 250 ton vessel or a missile. If we have a look at resolution one, which is needed for an AMM sensor, or AMM, this will allow you to detect missiles properly. So as we can see here, this has a detection range in the millions of kilometers and also hundreds of thousands of kilometers in terms of the range. Now keep in mind that generally the main important part of an active search sensor is that it matches the range of your weapons and or your missiles. Another important fact is that it gives you ample time to be able to prepare and understand your enemy before you close into combat range. So design your sensor around this. Then we have electronic hardening. Generally ignored, this is used for defending against microwaves, which are weapons that deal damage to electronics and can wipe out your sensors. Rarely used these, these weapons are, so most people do not bother with electronic hardening as it becomes expensive and heavy. This toggle will allow you to switch to missile fire control, but as we are talking about search sensors, it is not important as of now. Now we're going to have a look at EM detection sensors and thermal sensors. EM detection sensors are very simple. Using the same readout as active search sensors, it is governed by one technology, and you can change the size from one to 50 like normal. This is the, and also add electronic hardening. This is the same for thermal sensors. Once you are happy with one of these sensors, you can then hit create. This will add it to the research uh, part of the tree, and you can then uh, immediately research it within this uh, within the sensor and control systems part. So as we can see here, we can research the active uh, search sensor that was race designed. Once you have then researched it successfully, you'll want to head over to class design, find the ship you want to add it to, and then you want to add this sensor directly to the ship. This will then add the sensor to the ship and it will be used on all future designs that are built from this template. Thank you for watching the step by step tutorial and enjoy the rest of the video. Thank you and bye. In conclusion, I hope you have enjoyed the video. 
and learn something that will help you in designing your next ship. I also hope that this video has helped expand your overall knowledge of this part of the game. And while this video did cover a lot of topics I may have missed or was not as clear on everything related to this topic as I might have wanted to be. So feel free to provide clarification in the comments so others who might feel the same can get some extra context. Anyway, if you did enjoy the video, do feel free to like and subscribe as it really does help out. And I'll see you guys next, you guys on the next tutorial. Bye bye.